Will you pray with me? Lord, guide us as we consider this text from Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and what it means for us in living life today. Amen. So when I was uh, developing this sermon, I wanted an opener and I decided I would Google for a joke about fulfillment because fulfillment uh, is a major portion of what the book of Ecclesiastes talks about. So one note came up that said, fulfillment centers are no joke. Well, I said, oh, wow, look at that. So I looked at that and it was an article about Amazon having a fulfillment center that took things seriously, especially employee health and exercise. And I thought, oh, okay, so they're talking about that kind of fulfillment you know, the personal fulfillment, making sure their employees are fulfilled in life with their fulfillment center. However, when I Googled for a picture of the uh, fulfillment center at Amazon, it showed me how the Amazon fulfillment center is actually a center that is a distribution center that fulfills the orders. <laughs> now, that really made me chuckle because I thought, that's not the kind of fulfillment that Koalith and Solomon, our writers of Ecclesiastes, is talking about at all. In fact, what they knew about with fulfillment was how people are searching constantly for personal fulfillment in life. And they used and spoke on the first 11 chapters of the things most people try to find for fulfillment. They talked about money and pleasure and power and fame and how these things all lacked in finding fulfillment. And so we arrive at chapter 12, which is the important conclusion of their search. And it is found, their main conclusion is found in verses 13 and 14, where they write, hear the conclusion of this whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Did you catch what the writer tells us there? It is really two things. Fear God and keep God's commandments. It's right there in the text. So what does it mean? To fear God. I mean, it's not like, oh, I'm afraid of snakes or oh, spider, spider. It's not that kind of fear. The fear of God has more of an awestruck quality about it. When we consider God and all that God has made and the ways that God has made and the love that God has given for us, we end up saying, wow. Or when we consider all that God has made and how life is a little bit, whoa, whoa, I did this and yet God still loves me. That's a part of the fear of God that we're talking about. It is God as an awesome creator, God as an awesome, loving and forgiving God, God who doesn't have to forgive but chooses to forgive. And it is that kind of fear of God that we need to have, which brings us to the point of remembering that the one who created you did so for a reason. As such, finding out that reason for living and living it out needs to be a priority of our lives. The challenge may be, are you making God the priority that God needs to be? And do you need to reevaluate that and figure out how you can better do that with your life? See, I came across an article which had a good, simple test about how to measure your priorities. And to do that, it said, ask yourself three simple questions. Number one, if you had only one month to live, ask yourself, how would my life change? Then two, how is that different from how I am living now? And should I make a change then because of that? Then the third question they said is, what priorities does my life reflect today as I'm living and into the future as I want to live? 
I thought those were three pretty good questions. See, priorities have a lot to do with how effective you are in being who you want to be and doing what you want. Now that may sometimes mean getting what you want, but not always. Here's what is I call a metaphorical story about the guy who wanted to get rich. That was one of his things he really wanted. And he heard that the best way and most important way to get rich is to be willing to work as hard as you could. So the hardest work that he knew was digging ditches. So he started digging. He didn't get rich. He only got a backache. Working hard without having the right priorities will only get you frustration and pain. Instead, we need to work hard at making God our priority. The reason that this is important is what the writer tells us in Ecclesiastes about noting making God a priority early in your day, in your life. He especially was talking about early in your life. When you look at the very beginning of it, it says, in your days of your youth, before the difficult days come, right? That's what it says right there. In the days of your youth, before the difficult days come. <laughs> that statement is true to remind us that we should not start too late in life with this concept. In the days of our youth, in other words, Make God a priority before you get older, because that's what the writer goes on to talk about in the next eight, nine verses of chapter 12. Humorously, the text mentions putting God as a priority before you get older, and specifically in ways that we need to do it before we get older. Look at verse 2. Verse 2 says, Before the sun, the sun and the light and the moon and the stars grow dark, Okay. Now, when we first read that, we think, oh, okay, all right. Well, actually, what the writers, what the scholars tell us is he's talking about before your eyes start to go bad. You know how when you get older and sometimes you're driving at dusk and all of a sudden it's like, oh, I can't see as well as I used to. You know, you, you start needing glasses to see things because they're fogging away. And remember, back when this Ecclesiastes writer was writing, they didn't have glasses. So before these things grow dark. Yeah, he's talking about our eyes at that point in time. And then, verse 3, when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men bow down. Oh, yeah, that's talking about after the physical work that we do, that, you know, we used to be able to handle it, and, hand, and then we end up saying, oh, man, I have to sit down. I am so tired. Or we end up saying, oh, man, muscles hurt you wake up in the morning and oh man the back is getting us and the neck and you know that's what he's talking about here and then verse 3 also says when the grinders cease because they are few and when I heard that I was thinking oh well you know grinders like when you grind out something to try to make the path smooth because of what he was writing about in the first part of that but the scholars tell us that that's actually about teeth when the grinders are few. <laughs> well, back then, especially in that day, dental care wasn't the greatest, right? And people lost their teeth as they got older when the grinders were few. They didn't have dental implants. They didn't have crowns. They didn't have dentures when the grinders are few. And, and then verse five, when the almond tree blossoms and the grasshopper is a burden. Now, when you hear that, I just thought it was beautifully poetic. But our scholars tell us that this refers to when our hair grows white and we're not as strong as we used to be. It is very interesting how poetic that the writer of Ecclesiastes here talks about in humorous notes. Hey, the point being, put a priority on God early before you have some of the difficulties of life. Get used to doing it before it needs to be such a high priority so that you will be very good at it as you get older and as you grow. Now, some of you might say, Pastor, I'm already old. This may be a little too late for me. And to that, I would tell you, 
That is never true. We are never too old to revisit this important point from our text. Make God a priority daily. And if you've gotten away from it, get back to it. And yes, we have to do that every year, whether we are five or age 95. Remembering to make God a priority in life is what the writer tells us. We are to fear God and follow God's commandments. Interestingly, this fear of God concept, I think, honestly, we tend to have a better understanding of it as we grow older. Maybe when we are younger, we do not take enough time to grasp the concept and the wisdom found in how delicate life is, how dependent we are on the goodness of God in the midst of our life. So the fear of God becomes an easier concept to understand when we realize how fragile life is. I mean, think about this pandemic time. If there's anything that has shown us how fragile life is, it's the fact that some little virus thing started in China somewhere and has progressed to be such an amazingly difficult thing to cope with. And life is fragile for those who happen to get the virus. The fragile moments of life and remembering those are part of the discovery of the fear of the Lord. Because at any moment in time, life is fragile for every one of us. Therefore, the challenge comes to us regardless of our age. How are we benefiting from that knowledge of the fear of the Lord? How are we doing then in following that second aspect, which is the commandments of God? Remember, that is that second dimension that is so important. Follow the commandments of God. Do you remember some of the commandments of God that will help you find fulfillment in life? Think of your marriage. How you treat your spouse is part of living out the commandments of God, not being so selfish. How you raise your kids and your grandkids. God's teachings and his commands help us to do that so that our kids will grow up knowing God and hopefully not breaking our hearts as time goes by. Our friendships. God gives us teachings about how to treat people, how to love other people, how to be a real friend to others, how to care. And our money. There are teaching in there on how to be successful and how to handle our resources well. Our stewardship that is so important to living a life that becomes ourselves and becomes the gospel of Jesus Christ the one whom we are serving that's an important part of following the commandments of God remembering even all of that think back to what Jesus taught us when he was asked hey Jesus what's the greatest commandment and he said love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul and all your mind you know that sums up the book of Ecclesiastes quite well God is to be the priority. God wants to have you to have fulfillment in your life. So every day we need to fear God and follow his commandments because that brings us the best life that we can have and live. That is the foundation of real fulfillment. Everyone wants to live a life that matters. We want to be fulfilled and make a difference for our life and for the life of others. So the question becomes, what's the foundation for fulfilling our life that will make a real difference? And the answer truly is having a healthy fear of the Lord so we'll do as God wants with our life and making God's commandments a part of priority of living for others. May all of this give us a healthy fear of God that will give us the importance of a perspective for living life. Will you pray with me? Lord, guide us as we consider how we can truly live a life that becomes the gospel and a true worthy title of being Christian. Give us a healthy fear of your ways 
so that we can live the best we can. In Jesus' name.